Welcome to Ms. Chow's video lectures. In this unit of protein synthesis, we'll be focusing on splicing. In transcription, afterwards, depending on whether you're a eukaryote or prokaryote, you can have mRNA or pre-mRNA. So in prokaryotes, you will get mRNA. After transcription, a mRNA is made. Prokaryote skips splicing because it doesn't have a nucleus. And splicing usually occurs in nucleus. Also, their DNA sequences are small, and it doesn't have a whole bunch of junk DNA for it to, to go through splicing. The mRNA goes straight into translation. So in prokaryotes, this is a simple two-step process for protein synthesis. It will transcribe the DNA to mRNA. Then the mRNA is uh, translated into protein. And protein synthesis all occurs in the cytoplasm since prokaryotes do not have a nucleus. However, eukaryotes have a three-step process. Uh, let's go ahead and review from a segment of the chromosome a gene is taken out, unraveled, so that it can be transcribed by RNA polymerase, a piece of precursor mRNA. Precursor mRNA, and this is where the pre-mRNA name comes from. The pre-mRNA has two components of exons, which are in blue, and introns, which are in red. The introns go through splicing, which leaves the exon, the coding regions of the mRNA. And then later it's translated to protein. So now we're today we're going to focus on the eukaryotic process of splicing since prokaryotes don't go through this. So we're going to focus on this right here. In eukaryotes, after transcription occurs in the nucleus, the precursor mRNA, pre-mRNA, is made. The pre-mRNA contains two categories of mRNA, exons and introns. Exons are pre-mRNA sequences that code into protein, and these are shown here in the light blue. One, two, three, four, and five they actually contain a code for making the protein. However, in the blue, the darker blue, are the introns, which are pre-mRNA sequences are non-coding. So it's okay if these get damaged or not because they are non-coding. They're not responsible for important functions in terms of making a protein. So what happens is that introns are excised out. So here in the next step you can tell that the blue introns are cut out. Afterwards, exons, what are remaining, will form mRNA pieces into one whole entire mRNA. The mRNA is now ready to go out of the nucleus via the nuclear pores and cytoplasm. And then the mRNA will attach to our RNA, ribosomal RNA, to start translation. So a quick review, a general where we're at. In terms of making a protein, you have transcription, which DNA sequence is opened up to make pre-mRNA sequence. Because we're talking about eukaryotes coming out of that once the uh, it goes through splicing first and then will come out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm. Once the mRNA, the mRNA sequence comes into the cytoplasm, it will attach to the rRNA, the ribosomes, and make protein with the assistance of tRNA. This latter half in the cytoplasm we'll talk about in the next video. So what are the evolution advantages of having splicing? Yes, it's an extra step, but there are great advantages in insurance in which us eukaryotes have over prokaryotes. So when introns are excised out, there could be various combinations that you can end up with of your final protein, of your final pre-mRNA. So one of the things is that when you have pre-mRNA please, you have introns that are in blue, they're excised dots. So here are two scenarios that can happen in terms of combination. In both scenarios, the introns are spliced out. 
When the introns are spliced out, the exons will come together to form an mRNA sequence. However, when they're, the introns are excised out, the exons that are left over could switch places, which will give you a different variation of the protein. And where you can see here, the 3 and 2 has switched sides, so the final mRNA sequence is going to be different than the first one. Now the second one is that the introns are non-coded regions which does not have sequences that are in no use. Basically they're junk DNA as I mentioned before. So these dark blue pieces are junk DNA. It protects the protein from mutagens. How? Well let's just say you're laying out in the sun, you want to get a nice sun tan. Well, the sun is nice, keeps us warm, but the sun also is also power enough to have UV rays that can take your DNA, delete it in sequences of base pairs, switch them around, um, duplicate them. So when that happens, we want to have our junk DNA. It's kind of like our bodyguards. So if we have, we're walking around and our bodyguards are protecting us, and when the sun hits and just for instance, the sun hits one of our junk DNA here, the introns. If it hits one of the introns and then later on your DNA sequence needs to go through splicing, what happens is that the mutation that was on your introns get excised out and then your final product of your protein will be normal. You wouldn't have the phenotypic expression of the mutagen. So, those are the two evolutionary advantages of splicing. One, um, you can have different combinations. Two, it is like a bodyguard protecting your important parts, which are your coding regions, the exons, to give you a final mRNA sequence that could be made into a protein. And then on the next video lecture, we will focus on translation of protein.